In the fall of 2006, writer-director Tino Dolina embarked on a journey to recreate the life of YouTube personality Cater17. This is his story. Tino Dolina began his life in Honolulu, Hawaii, where he was raised by his mother and father. His parents said he always had a talent for things theatrical and cinematic. When the Dulina family moved to Oklahoma, Tino soon found that creativity and imagination were the only things to save him from sheer boredom. Beginning in the new year of 1996, Tino began to make independent films. Since then, he has worked on countless commercial projects and made several short films. In 2006, he was inspired to create something that hadn't been done before. Yeah, I'd become a fan of Kate's blogs, I will admit. So naturally, when the show made a viewer participation opportunity, I jumped at the chance. Tino then began to assemble a crew for the task at hand. When Tino first came to me and he said he wanted to do a short on Cade, I was ecstatic. I mean, I love the girl, she's hilarious. And for me to say I'm not a Cade fan, I'd be lying. Yeah, Tino and I, we go way back. I mean, we've worked on a couple of projects together, uh, uh, me being an editor, of course. And uh, uh, so we've had past work history with each other because, you know, we've worked on other films together. And so, yeah. Am I done? Casting began after Perception Studios had greenlit the film. The production set out to hire esteemed stage actor Tino Delena. The script was like nothing I'd ever seen before. I mean, it was pretty ambitious. You had this guy, this character, pretending to be a woman, who was kidnapped by a woman pretending to be a guy. I mean, I was speechless. The crew began pre-production the day before the shoot. Tino, the DP, and I, yeah, we had these discussions about how we were even going to go about creating this world that Kate lived in. And uh, I remember I had the scene, uh, the scene idea uh, very early on, and uh, it was totally left field, but uh, I convinced him that it would be good. There were these storyboards he had made featuring a film noir story, and I remember thinking to myself, Tina, are you mad? I mean, who tells film noir stories anymore? But he had convinced me, and I was quite pleased with the end product. Production began on an early Saturday night. Things were running smoothly until disaster struck. I could remember getting ready for our first setup, and lo and behold, the camera stops working. There was a short in the system apparently, and if we hadn't fixed it, there would be no film. Luckily, I was able to jury rig it with a replacement part from another camera. Cut my thumb in the process, but at least it brought the film back up to speed. Another problem that plagued the set was time. The studio had a deadline for the following Sunday morning. If it wasn't done, the studio would pull the plug. At the time, I was worried that we wouldn't get done. I mean, there were some 23 costume changes, and if I remember correctly, not all of them made it into the film. Under pressure to complete the project on time, Tino personally oversaw the film's editing. It was rough, man. Trying to put together a 10-minute film in 24 hours with all those scenes? I mean, it was crazy. There was a lot of shoulder involved, let me put it that way. <laughs> there was a lot of shoulder. So, uh, I think at one point I even fell asleep at the computer, and then I... What? I'm not supposed to say that? Coming close to completion, the crew finally finished midday on Sunday. The film was actually up and running that afternoon. And I remember being so nervous. I mean, not just for the response on me, but for the film as a whole. The film came out that day, and it was more than I ever expected. The exchange brought in over 500 views over the next three days, and received wonderful comments from many viewers. What can I say, it's just amazing. It was an extremely well done project. I attribute the film's success to our subject matter, Kate, and not what we did, but it's nice to know that people liked it. The following Wednesday, Tina went back to the studio to make some touch-ups that had been neglected due to time restraints. Yeah, I know a lot of people that say that going back and fixing your film is career suicide. You know, they say that people are going to say, Hey, uh, why did you change this part? No one's going to notice. 
So, uh, but I didn't do it for them, you know. I did it because I wanted to bring the best possible film to the people. After making the special edition of The Exchange, Tino has put the current Kate saga to rest. Now he looks toward the future for his next inspiration.